everyone, it's Effie here. So today, um, as part of my uh, my development process, I'm working on the um, doing some studies for the characters in the scene. So, as you can see, this is my uh, preliminary painting. Um, this is this is just a very small. Uh, kind of low resolution version of what the final painting is going to look like and it's and it may not it, it may not look 100% like this it's probably not going to look 100% like this but for the most part the composition is going to remain the same um, all the major compositional elements are going to be in the right place um, but part of the development process is to take this rough compositional painting a mini painting and really flesh it out and add a lot of detail. So one thing that I'm working on today is I need to figure out the the actual poses and the, um, the I guess the composition of the figures themselves within the larger painting. And for the smaller the smaller preliminary piece, I really just kind of threw four figures in there, um, but they're they're not really a, uh, according to scale. Uh, they're not really in a very realistic position, and, uh, and and there isn't a lot of action, like like really good action there. So so I have to take this and flesh it out a little bit more. So the first step in fleshing it out is I basically do a lot of little scribbles, a lot of little gestural drawings, and these drawings are not good <laughs> at all. They're really just um, just me, my brain, just trying, trying to noodle around and figure out what could work. So I know that I'm going to have, uh, I know I'm going to have a paladin, I'm going to have a dwarf, I want to have a mage and a ranger, and uh, the, the paladin is going to have a shield and sword, a flaming sword, the mage is going to be casting um, a defensive shield uh, spell to protect the the, war the adventurers. The um, the ranger is going to have a long range weapon like a bow or a crossbow. And I hadn't figured out the dwarf like what the dwarf was going to have at first, but I do know I want there to be a big sack of treasure in it as well <laughs> because the story is the story I was thinking about was um, the adventurers had just come out of this chamber, uh, but that was full of treasure and they have awakened the dragon and the wormlings and they are in the middle of their escape with the treasure when the big dragon comes out and all the little wormlings kind of have them cornered. So so I tried a couple of things for the dwarf. Um, at, at first here I had him holding a couple of uh, battle axes or knives like having kind of a weapon in each hand but as I was working and kind of noodling along I, I really like the idea of having I don't know if you can kind of understand what's going on here of <laughs> having this dwarf kind of be behind something um, maybe a fallen pylon or a, a fallen statue I'm not entirely sure what yet and he's going to be lobbing bombs at the the dragon there's going to be a bomb right here. So I like that idea. I'm going to try to explore it, flesh it out. Um, I liked the idea of finally of having, let me see, having the mage and the paladin be almost kind of back to back and getting some nice uh, like diagonal lines of action with their with their arm poses. So uh, it's it's a very dynamic uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very important part of the final image, so I wanted there to, I thought it would be a really good thing to, for there to be a lot of kind of uh, crossing angles in the gesture of the figures. And for the, uh, for the ranger, I was, I kind of decided on having him be almost like a rifleman so he, he rather than using a traditional bow he would be which requires some uh, kind of pretty expansive arm movements that I don't think will work with the other figures he will be holding a crossbow so he can be kneeling and in a similar position to a kneeling rifleman 
The next thing I'm going to do is use my posable art action figures to uh, one, fill out the poses that I am thinking of and see if they're actually feasible. And if they are feasible, um, I photograph them with my iPhone. So I only have two figures. Um, I have this male figure and this female figure. I have a couple of, of other ones, but they are not the same size, so I, I really can't use them both. Uh, so I took, first I took a photo of the paladin in a different position and the mage back to back. And then I reposed the figure and put him in the position I would put the dwarf in and the position I would put the ranger in. So now I'm in Procreate, which is a very useful tool for uh, sketching and really, really quickly photo bashing or collaging together ideas. So I took the photo of the mage and the paladin that I like the most, um, and then I inserted cutouts of the dwarf and of the of the ranger. And for the dwarf, um, I distorted him a little bit so that he appears a little bit more squat and a little bit more wide. And there's only much, so much you can do with that tool, but it, it goes a long way into helping me figure out like just how, how he kind of sits on the page and how he compares in size to the other figures. One awesome trick that I used that I learned from Dan DeSantos when I was uh, doing the Smart School class was to use a website called Sketchfab, which sells 3D models, and they have a really awesome preview viewer um, to look for a really good reference material. And if, in case you haven't guessed it yet, reference, reference, reference. If you're doing anything realistic, if you're painting anything realistic, or if you're painting anything that is um, from a historical time period, you need to have good reference material to make it believable. So um, I have, I'm looking at my ranger here. I've already put one in here, but um, uh, just gauge his relative position. Then I go to Sketchfab. I will move the object that I want to put into the scene roughly into position, take a screenshot, and then import that into Procreate. So now I've gone ahead and repeated that same process for other objects in the scene. I've added in some rocks in the background, uh, the paladin's tower shield, his sword, the uh, quiver for the ranger, a nice piece of uh, rubble that I found here, the treasure sack, and so now I have some really, really helpful, uh, accurate reference material for when I go to draw my figures later on. Um, so th in this entire process, I've gone from these very kind of loose, unformed sketches to something that is much more exact. I'm still not 100% done with my reference for the figures because they are they're very important and they're and Painting and drawing figures requires a lot of accuracy. Another thing that I'm probably going to do after this is photograph myself in, and other people, people that I know, people who are willing to model for me in um, various outfits. Um, I have a couple of costume pieces in my closet and a couple pieces actually coming. So I have some, I have some armor that I can put on somebody. I have some medieval like long style skirts and dresses. I have capes and hoods and some props. So um, when, once I photograph those, I'll be able to understand the way the clothing falls and other, other details in the scene as well. You might also be asking why I would even go through the trouble of, of doing this. And the answer is that it would, it makes, this maybe took me like an hour and a half, two hours to, to do everything. Um, but if I, if I do this step, it saves me many, many hours of guesswork in the future. Thanks for hanging out with me behind the scenes as I walk you through how I accomplish some of my studies for the figures. Um, see you next time.